providing. Thank you. I forgot. Um, and we're we're going to be talking today about Canvas, a, a learning management system that we are considering using in some form. We'll probably use it for whatever uh, group of students are learning fully online. I know that there is uh, community interest in having some online program available. We're not sure what that will look like yet, but the Canvas would be the management system we'd use for that. But we could use it in other ways too. And it's important since we haven't used anything like this in the district before, that we all have an overview of what a learning management system is, what Canvas is, and what it does. And so that's the purpose of this, just so we're all on the same page and have the same information moving forward as we make decisions. So thank you guys for coming. Uh, joining me today uh, to lead this presentation is Tom Fortier. Hello. He took time from swimming and the beach there to uh, demo Canvas for us. So thank you, Tom, for doing that. Tom's been investing huge amounts of time uh, to learn Canvas. Um, and so he has dedicated himself, thank you, Ryan, for doing that and to becoming our, our Canvas IT expert. So we have that part of it supported. And then I'm trying to support the pedagogy and the teaching so that we can fully support any teacher who's using Canvas in the future. Also here today is Ryan Botton. Hi, Ryan. And he is always welcome in any webinar, um, if nothing else, for his awesome radio voice. Go ahead and say something, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. It is good to see you. Welcome. So he'll be managing the chat, too, and letting people in. If you have any issues with audio or video and you get kicked out, just rejoin. Uh, Ryan's monitoring that waiting room. He'll let you back in. Use the chat. We'll stop whenever we need to to ask questions. All right. Any, any questions before we get started? All right. So let's talk a little bit about Canvas. Canvas um, is a learning management system that is um, created with, uh, in, in structure is the company that owns Canvas, in structure. It's a cloud-based learning management system. So all this uh, information is stored in the cloud, not on servers in uh, the, the office there at the district. And it was specifically designed first for K-5 and to K-12, and now they've gone up to higher education. So it really was created in mind for the K-12 environment. And that's, I think, why it's taken off the way it has and is being used in so many places. So what is a learning management system? So this is just, uh, think of it as a place to store all the things you use to teach. And in lieu of the new reopening guidelines from the state, which I've linked below the picture. So again, if you have the slides, um, we'll post them again in the chat if needed. But uh, the link here, a California guidebook for safe reopening of schools was just sent out this week from the state. And in it, it mentions many of the things that we're going to be talking about in the use of a learning management system. So uh, we are definitely being encouraged to bring on something like this so that we can better support students, teachers, and families as we go in and out of distance learning or fully distance or fully face-to-face. -face. Um, it's definitely a useful tool. Also at the top, I put a link to a San Francisco Chronicle ar article about um, these new reopening rules. So if you want to read that also, I just want to have the information there for you. So why use an LMS? I've listed some bulleted items there. Basically, it's a storehouse for everything we do. You all have different apps that you use at your site. We all have different curriculum that we're using. And all of that gets integrated into one spot, a learning management system like Canvas. So that no matter uh, what the student is doing, whether they're at school or at home, it's consistent and it's easy to find. And it reduces students getting lost tab toggling and having so many tabs open, they don't know what's what. It keeps it in one space and reduces that confusion and frustration. It also has a bunch of features for accessibility, um, collaboration, and other tools we'll show you. In addition to that, Canvas, or all um, LMSs, also have libraries of lessons and modules. Canvas has a really robust one. Um, and I listed some other things there. So we're gonna go over a lot of that. So that's why use an LMS. Why Canvas, excuse me, um, it's a, a very streamlined tool. Has anybody in here ever taken a class in Canvas? Anybody taken a class? Okay. Anybody ever taken a class in Blackboard? Yeah, and uh, 
I have two, and I much preferred Canvas when I did it. And I hear that a lot. Occasionally, somebody likes Blackboard, but overwhelmingly, uh, Canvas has grown in the space, in the education online space. And it seems to just be easier to use, more streamlined, uh, more clean than Blackboard, and easier for a teacher and less uh, technology needed to do the things you need to do in there. Blackboard can be tricky if you don't know a lot of tech type stuff, and Canvas is better at that. So it's um, definitely streamlines digital tools and content. Uh, Tom is going to go over that and talk to you about how it integrates with our curriculum and other tools that we're using. Uh, it allows us to have a simpler, more connected learning experience for students and teachers and families. It's also been adopted by CR and all the CSUs in California. So it's also preparing kids for things that they're going to probably encounter or may encounter going forward. And it is used by eight of the top 20 bachelor, online bachelor programs, which I found out. And I put a picture on here of a sample dashboard for a first grade class. So that's a picture of what a first grader would see when they log into Canvas. So we're going to show you a lot of things and it can be super complicated like for a college course, but it can also be at this level, simple, easy and clean for our littlest learners. Okay. So that's a nice picture. I just um, found that because I joined the uh, Canvas teacher users group, I think it's called on Facebook. Um, and I'll share that link too if you're interested in joining that later. So what are some advantages? I have two slides here. Advantages for faculty and advantages for students. So for faculty, you guys, it's an easier building experience. Um, it just makes the, the process of building a course, putting in a unit, assigning work easier than in other learning management systems. Um, in my opinion, and I know not everybody may agree with that, but it really does seem to be an easier process to get things set up, make things published and visible, um, and, and see what the student's gonna see. SpeedGrader is an awesome tool. I've used SpeedGrader. I taught an eight-week course for NGSS earlier this year with some teachers here in Del Norte, and SpeedGrader was amazing. What an awesome way to handle that when kids are submitting digital essays or projects. It kind of puts them in a process where you can provide all types of feedback written I could record a quick audio note for my students or a video, and they can do the same for me. And it lets you rotate through, assign a score, provide feedback. They can submit and resubmit work. It's an amazing tool. There's also Blueprint courses. And Blueprint courses are um, something we could create and use as a district if we chose to, where maybe all the fifth grade teachers would get together and come up with pacing for the year and the units and some basic things they all should have. And then we can push that out to every fifth grade teacher. So it would seriously reduce work in creating this stuff online. Um, and we could do that for every grade or for different subject areas if we wanted to. But that would help ensure that everybody's getting exposed to the same curriculum, right? It also has integration tools, which we'll show you later. All those apps that you use, kids could access right inside Canvas. And then Mastery Paths, this is something we heard about something similar to this with School City years ago. Uh, and what mastery paths are is if a student takes, does an assignment or an assessment in Canvas, you can have it um, predetermined that if a kid gets this grade or lower or this series of grades, that they would be given this work. It would automatically, when they hit submit, grade it, and then say, try these three things because maybe they need remediation. Or if they score above, it would say, submit, grade it, here's some more work for you to do, and you might have had enrichment there. So it, it helps that learning continue, even if you're not face-to-face -face with the kid or if they're working in a small group and you're working with somebody else. So kids don't get stuck or stopped, they can continue with their learning. So mastery paths are something that I thought was really cool in the system as well. For students, it has a mobile app. It actually has a mobile app for teachers, students, and parents. And 50% of student respondents that Canvas surveyed about how they use their product use it on an app. And we know kids do a lot of work on a phone. And it works great on a phone. It's designed for that, which is a nice feature um, for all grades, really. Uh, there's some other tools that are uh, beneficial for kids, like helping them monitor their grade ongoing and seeing, oh, if I got this on this score, um, this assignment, how would that affect my grade? Uh, something certainly for an older student, maybe middle school and up, but uh, something helps them be more autonomous in their learning and more motivated. It has simplified collaboration, whole new approach to group work, 
there are more uh, more ways to manage group work in Canvas than I can even list. And students can even do some of their own managing, and you oversee it all. So it's a great collaboration tool for students, and it works with everything you normally use in Google and all those other places. The calendar is one of the single best tools in Canvas for a new teacher starting. And Tom will go over that and show you some ways that you can use that. But calendar is a great way to keep parents and students and everybody focused on what needs to be done. I know that we have students here up at Mountain. And when we went to distance learning, um, we started right away with having assignments ready for our kids. And so one of our younger students was learning right away. And then the high school student came on board. So the parents at home going, okay, now my high school student has work to do. And at one point she got overwhelmed and she goes, I'm, we're not doing any more. I can't keep track of who logs in where, where the work is. This one's got three places to go. This one's got three places to go. I'm done. I'm working. I'm a single parent. And it was frustrating. So that's a nice thing about calendar and canvas is we keep everything in one spot and we reduce that confusion and frustration and we simplify it um, so that parents can manage it if they are home with their kids. Students can manage it you know, if they're learning on their own. And it keeps things organized in the classroom too. Okay, and then organization, all the apps are here. So kids don't have to go out for FlowCab, out for reading eggs, out for different places. We can put those things within Canvas. Uh, outcomes are another feature. You can observe student mastery using um, outcomes. So I put a couple screenshots here that show we have, uh, we have all the standards uploaded. So ELA, math, science. In addition, California content standards like for arts, ELD, history, social studies, phys ed, those are all in here. So for any assignment, uh, a rubric for an assignment or an assessment, you can attach standards to it and track that student's progress on standards over time. Some additional features that I think would be um, beneficial to MTSS and the things that we're doing here, uh, the faculty journal. So for a student in Canvas, any of the teachers or counselors uh, that are involved with that student, can circle up virtually through the faculty journal. So they can take notes, they can collaborate on student progress, attendance, behavior, and they can do that all virtually and circle up around a kid through Canvas. It's not visible to the kid, it's not visible to the parents, but it's a way to help support that kid uh, throughout their school career and just switches every year with the new uh, teachers and counselors that are assigned to that student. And then the e-portfolios, So students can use an e-portfolio to collect work across their school career. So even from as, as young as K up through 12, projects that they do can be stored in their personal e-portfolio and then taken with them when they leave school. Video projects, essays, resumes, uh, anything they do that they wouldn't want to keep in an e-portfolio can be saved with them and then uh, you know used when they leave. And a lot of kids like to take the projects that they're really proud of with them when they go. And it's a nice, uh, accumulation of work over time as well. And there's more benefits there. I put a whole link to it because there's a lot about the ePortfolio if you're interested. And an ePortfolio was also mentioned in the guidelines from the state. So that's why I thought that was worth mentioning as well. This is a link, the words there in blue, the instructional con continuity and equitable access. Uh, part of the CARES Act uh, is making sure that uh, we, we learn and support instructional continuity and equitable access as we begin a full, you know, as we begin working in the new way of school right now anyway, which is in some form, kids are going to be off campus for their learning part of the time. And so this is a article that you might be interested in reading about how a management system helps you do that so that we do support continuity of learning. You can use Canvas and I have examples embedded in the slideshow. Whether you have your kids all day every day, whether and they maybe go on vacation for two weeks, or whether you have them two days a week and three days a week they're at home learning. You can use it and it's it provides that continuity and so we're prepared for anything, right? If they close down schools again, we just keep going and the kids are trained and everybody knows where to go and we, we reduce um, confusion and we keep learning going. So that's a nice feature as well. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it over to Tom, who's gonna talk about um, what Canvas looks like and demo some of the features in it, and then we'll wrap up with a bunch of examples and allow time for questions at the end. Any questions before we switch? I'll let Tom uh, take over the screen here.
All right. Well, I'll just say it, Canvas can be used in an offline mode for the students that don't have internet at home. They can't take tests and that sort of thing, but much of the content can be downloaded. So if students come once a week or however often, they can grab the content that I'm going to show you here shortly so that they can use it while they're at home without the internet. And this is just a demonstration. It's not a training, so no stress. This is just an overview of, of some of the capabilities of Canvas. So this is the, the student view. Uh, when a student logs in, they'll see all of their classes here with these course cards. On the right side, they'll see a to-do list from all of their classes of some homework that's coming up. And then they'll see recent feedback from teachers about how they did on assignments and tests. Here's what a, a class looks like. Ray mentioned this. Uh, this is more complex and probably better for like older kids. Younger kids would probably have a lot less typing and a lot more pictures. Um, The calendar, if you schedule anything like assignments or Zoom conferences or anything like that, the students will be able to see that in their, their calendar. The calendar is color coded, so each class will have a different color, so they'll be able to know what they have due on each day just by going to their calendar. They can easily write to the instructor, uh, just pick the course that they want. Uh, communicate with the teacher that way. All of the communication is, is here um, in the course. So let me go to uh, the instructor view. When you log in as an instructor, you'll see all of the courses that you have. If you are the, uh, teach the type of thing like Spanish one where you have many sections with the same exact content, you can create one shell course and link all of those sections to it. So you just have to manage one group of students, one group of assignments and quizzes and grading and all that. You don't have to, um, you don't have to do it individually. Probably on the first day of class, the first thing that you probably would get students to do is log into this on their Chromebooks and then uh, they can uh, get a QR code that will allow them to hook up their, their app uh, to the Canvas instance. It's the same for you, the teachers and the parents will also be the same. Everybody, this is the easiest way to get in. Without the QR code, you could just search for our instance, which is DNCOE. If you search for that, you'll be able to find us. You can also set um, your notification preferences, like if somebody turns in an assignment, do you want to be notified right away or daily or weekly or just not notified at all? You can be notified about just about everything here. So let me step into a, a class here. So this is the same page that we saw, that the, the student side saw. And if I were to make any changes to this, I could just use this student view, just click here and then it would, it would show me what the students would see. So as you work on your, your Canvas class, you can use this student view just to you know, make sure it looks like the way that you want it to. The people tab it will be all of the students uh, that are in a, a given course and it's sorted by section. So if you have many sections with the same content and you look all, link all of those classes together, they would all be here and they would be grouped by, uh, by section. From this view, I can see the last time students uh, logged in. So if people are falling off the grid, I can, I can tell just by looking here. So it's pretty easy. I can see the total time they've devoted to the class. And then if you're the uh, type of class that has like work groups of three or four people, you just come here and create them and you can just pick and choose the students. So this might be handy for discussions or for homework assignments and that sort of thing. Um, the announcements tab. Just about everything in Canvas, you can figure out just by clicking. It's pretty hard to break anything, so you know, feel free. But to create a, 
a new announcement. And this would be the same for like a homework assignment. You give it a title. And this is a rich text editor. So you have all the normal things you would have. But in addition to that, you can, you can record uh, an audio or a video announcement if you wanted to. So you didn't have to type. You could just go through and, you know, say, welcome to my class. You know, here's what I expect during the semester. There is a, a pretty good math equation uh, creator. So I don't know math, but if I did, this probably would be pretty cool. And for sure, for math classes, this probably would be a really handy tool to have. Once I've created the, the announcement, then I pick who does it go to. Like if it's, if it's just um, everybody or maybe just a subsection of the class, if there were any attachments associated with it, if I didn't want this, uh, this announcement to be posted until Monday, I could just pick when, um, when it would be posted and you know, I, if the students were allowed to like it and that sort of thing, and then I just save and then that is pretty much it. It's pretty easy to do, it's a handy tool. If you create an announcement and the students have Canvas on their phones, they'll, they'll get an alert saying, hey, there is a new announcement. Quizzes uh, are a pretty powerful part of, of Canvas. You can have you know, a variety of quizzes like essays and multiple choice and matching and all those types of things. And you can have the tests be graded uh, automatically or ungraded. So here, here is a quiz, it's a multiple choice. I'm just going to preview it to see what the students would see just to make sure it looks good. While this is building, I'll just tell you that some of the things you can do, if students were taking this in class, you can have a random order for the questions so that if students are sitting next to each other, they can't look at their neighbors and, and the order of the potential answers. So I'm just going to answer this incorrectly. I told this quiz to automatically grade. So it, it tells me how long it took, the number of correct answers, it shows what the correct answer should have been, and it gives feedback based on the performance of the student. So Tom, I'll also throw in, because I know we got the question yesterday. Um, yeah, their assessment tool is great. They have a lot of options here, but you can still use Google Forms for your tests. Um, another student said quizzes. Another teacher said they use quizzes. So you can use those things in here also, and they would be, they'd look the same. They'd be right here within Canvas. They wouldn't have to go somewhere else to take it. Um, you can bring those things in. So you. It's just one more option for assessment. That's right. Hey, Tom, we had a question that I'm not sure on the answer on. I'll just interject sure. here. I think they can, but um, they won't talk about uploading a PDF, uh, just like a, a document. I think, yes. didn't you do that, like attach it via an announcement or something? Yes, do you mean for a, a quiz? Because they, that is one of the, the uh, the quiz types is a submission where you can do that. Or if it's an announcement, just about every part of this, you can attach a document. Great, yeah, thank so you. If it's an assignment or anything, they can easily upload a PDF as an option. Yes, a PDF or it can be video, uh, if, if that's what you're looking for, or a website or yeah, any of those types of things. There is a plagiarism checker. So if it's um, an essay, that would be a handy tool to use. Discussions are a, are a pretty powerful uh, tool. And this is maybe better for the older grades. But there are two types of discussions. One where the teacher asks an open-ended question, like, what's your favorite food? And then maybe one student will say pizza. And then other students can comment on on that. And then it, maybe another student says they like apple pie. And then students can also comment on that. Um, or you can just have where you just ask, do you like pizza? And everybody has to answer the, the teacher's question. So the difference is threaded and non-threaded. You can uh, associate a rubric for it so that if the student uh, posts 
one time they maybe get one point if they comment on two other students posts and maybe they get an additional point. Um, you can have it so that the student comments are not visible until you until you approve them. So they would be moderated. Uh, and Tom, I believe I've used it where you can have it, you can put kids into different groups and maybe they just have discussions within the groups or projects, or you can randomly assign groups. So it has a lot of flexibility in how you have kids work. It doesn't always have to be whole class. Yes, that's right. Yeah. The assignments, I. This is where you, you tell Canvas how much each part of your class is worth. So, uh, you know, this was my breakdown. And then for the individual assignments, I also added one extra rule where I dropped the lowest score. And if there was some assignment, like you have to introduce yourself on the first day that you just thought was critical, you could make it so that that didn't ever drop. So whatever grade they got on that, they would, they would keep even if that was the lowest score. So I'm just going to step into an assignment. Here's the, the title and the, and the body. Here's where I told it how much it was worth. We we're talking about the submissions earlier. I told it, it was text entry. This is when a, a student would just type right into uh, Canvas if they had to do an essay in real time. But if they needed to record something, they could just do that. Or if there was some picture they created, they could upload that here. You can choose the number of times they're allowed to, to uh, submit the assignment. You can... Uh, choose whether or not to sync this with Aries. So if this is something you want to go to the Aries gradebook, this is where you would, you, would, uh, you would tell Canvas to do so. And then this is where you pick uh, who gets the assignment. So if you had six of the same English class all day long, you could assign this maybe to first period first this week and then second period next week. And you know, this is where you would do it. You could just have you know, an unlimited number of groups here. So Tom, a couple questions, if I can ask right now. Sure. Um, you talked a little bit about grading. How does standards-based grading look in Aries? I mean, in um, Canvas? I know we have a pass back, so it passes grades back to um, Aries. You mean like the Common Core standards? I think so. Becky George was asking that. So I think I think you, it, it would work just like it does in Aries because you're going to be passing those grades back to Aries. Is that correct? Uh, we don't have we don't grade in Aries because we don't have that. In fifth, uh, I'll, fifth I'll, I'll jump in. I mean, the the standards are I mean, that's more of a, an Aries situation, right? In without like associated standards for each assignment, right? The Aries grade book for standards based grades, you know, you, you'd have to do the same thing here in Canvas, you'd have to associate a standard with each assignment. Um, so that it would pass back to the, the, the correct structure in Aries, which would also have a, a standard well, associated as a fourth and uh, fifth grade teacher. Uh, I know th the teachers I work with, we've never had a any kind of training or anything to use Aries as a grading system. So we have never used it. You're 100 percent correct. Um, don't have a great answer for you short of we are aware of that situation and we would like to eventually get Aries built out so that it is more applicable for you as the one through five standards based grade teachers to be able to utilize it. So then the answer is the canvas won't do it either. I don't think that's true. I We incorporated all of the California based standards. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, so I don't know how exactly right. it works, but all of the standards for Ray can speak better to it, but math and science are all there. Yeah, math, science, ELA. So I, I think I understand now. Yeah, so you, since you don't have it in Aries currently, you're saying, can you use it in here? And yes, you can. They do have a standards-based uh, grade program. I haven't used it too much because I've only taught teachers in this, so I wasn't assigning standards to it, but I did play around with some other standards. So yes, and I can provide more information on that. Thank you. That would be great. Got it. 
by yeah, default, I guess, we will have a good answer to that question. Yeah, and that's the key really to understand. I'll, I'll, I'll stop beating this horse, but you know, in Canvas, yes, you have to associate with standards, which they've got imported, Tom and, and Ray. And so we would just need to make sure that mapping back to the structure in Aries, that the, the structure has to exist in Aries in the gradebook to, to match that. But Canvas, yes, can absolutely assign standards to the assignments. Thank you. Yeah, it's not a, not a Canvas problem. It's more of a us getting Aries to understand that. Okay, so Tom, just a couple more and I'll let you go on here. All right. um, the other question I saw, how do you merge classes from Aries into one course uh, from Kelly? So we had that question out here at Mountain too, because Sandy's got like um, 20 classes in Aries, you know, because every subject for sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Um, and you can do that. So you don't have to be overwhelmed by, um, by having all those courses. So I think Ryan just posted that. Do you want to talk about that, Ryan? I can tell you about that. I'll just show you, this is way more advanced than for this, but you would go into your course settings and then sections. You type in your section here and add it. So this Tom's Canvas course is the, the master shell that I want all the subordinate courses to be. I would just add my 20 sections here. And then, and then whenever I go into this course, I would see you know, all 20 sections worth of people would be here. But we can talk about that offline. Yeah, some of it has to be done like at the admin level, I think, from what I was looking into. Um, but yeah, for those teachers that, you know, do multiple grades and um, like like Kelly, you know, you're obviously teaching lots of grades, lots of subjects that can absolutely exist in one Canvas shell. Thank you, Ryan and Tom. And one more thing, um, how does this look from an IA's point of view? So that's a great question, Shay. I know that we can manually add like counselors and other people that don't have students rostered to them. I believe we can add instructional assistants as well. We sure can. And, and in addition to that, there's a, a teacher assistant role where you can, you can assign some like grading and that sort of thing, abilities, group membership changes. So yes, it, it has that, and we can definitely add uh, IAs to this. All right. And, and oh, I put that ahead. in the chat too, but just, just quickly, it's not just IAs, but sections can have multiple teachers as well. So like grade levels, you know, if you had a, I don't know, there's probably like a, maybe a, I don't know the counselors this year during distance learning set together, put together a bunch of like grade level classes with all third graders or all fifth graders or whatever. So you could have multiple people helping teach that course. And it, that would also help with subs. If you knew a sub was coming, you could add them. And, you know, we can help you with that. It's super easy to add a new person to your course. So uh, they would have access to the same thing. So now modules. Uh, this is where you, I like in this test course, I used units, but this could be week one, two, three, or whatever. I'm just going to show you what it takes to, to add some content to a module. It's really easy. We just incorporated STEM scopes. So I am going to use that for the first time. So it's an external tool. I would just go to, you know, what I was looking for. So here's STEM scopes. I'll just pick this. And then T stands for teacher and S is for student. So I don't know, this one looks interesting. This is what they will see. Just add the item and, and there it is. I guess I don't need the, well, yes. So this is, this is it. I'll just show you what it, I'm excited, Tom. I'm yeah. excited. That was so easy. So that is the the first E, or uh, it's explained as part of the five E. That's the picture. Um, and then, can you show us what that looks like from a student? Yes. So yeah, the idea is not it, to turn you into web developers. It's just going to be hopefully clicking to add content. But so here is the the student side, so they can you know see this. Um, the handout is there. So however you wanted to use yeah. it. Yeah. So that, that's super easy then to bring that um, adopted curriculum content into Canvas. And we can also do this ELA and math and other curriculums. Yes. Yep. I, I will work on them one at a time and, and get them in there. It, 
the same holds true for YouTube. If you had a YouTube video, um, you, you know, you can search for it, or if you have the exact, um, the exact name of it. So here is a canvas video. I'm just going to embed this just, just to show you. So it, it was that easy. That was all I had to do to get in unit or week three, these two, these two items. If I didn't want the students to see week three, I, I could make it so that by default it's not published, which means the students can't see this. So I could only expose the content that I want them to be able to see. So maybe like one week at a time, I would come and, and open this up. Or it, there's a way that you can have it so that uh, if they're working independently, this is the way it is usually at colleges. As soon as they finish unit one, then then unit two is is exposed. It's not time based, but instead it you know it's, it, as soon as they finish all of the requirements of unit two, then unit three would be visible. All right. I'm going to jump in here too with a question, Tom. We got some sure. good questions coming in. Um, privacy issues can students see other students do they, they can know who's in the class they do know who's in the class i they they can see here i think we can hide you can. email addresses so that they're they're masked and you can as a teacher turn on that they can communicate with with each other and if they do it's with an email address that isn't reversible like you can't know somebody's email address by uh by emailing them in canvas it's it's basically like a, a one-way hash yeah you um, definitely have options for um what they see it'd be it'd be no different it actually probably more options to restrict that here than you would them sitting next to each other in class um, where they can easily see each other's scores on things and then if, if you look at, at this view here this is the teacher view some of the the eyeballs with a slash through it are things that I, I said, I don't want the students to be able to see. So if I didn't want them to see this tab at all, I could hide it so that it just wouldn't be visible. Like if, if you're not going to do discussions, then this wouldn't need to be visible either. You know, you'll just pick, uh, you know, what you want uh, students to see. So if this seems like it would be an issue, you could get rid of it. You know, of course for the teacher view will be there, but the students, they just wouldn't be able to see it. And that is just done here in navigation. So I would just disable it and save it. And then now the students can't see it anymore. Probably the, the best time-saving part of this whole tool is the grade book. So for this class, I can see all the students down in the left and I can see all of the assignments and quizzes uh, across the top for the uh, the whole semester or everything that's assigned so far. I can have a, a blanket late policy where I can choose, you know, how much people are penalized for, for late scores and that sort of thing. I can, uh, if I see that, that some students haven't turned in an assignment, I can click here and message students who haven't submitted it yet, or haven't been graded or high score or low score. So I can just send them a reminder, hey, you need to do this. Um, I could change the, the score just right here if I wanted to just to, you know quickly go down and um, make the changes. And there is a, 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 a tool called SpeedGrader, which Ray mentioned earlier. This, uh, I think it's gonna be life-changing for some people. This is a, was an essay assignment. I can see uh, how many students uh, total have turned it in and um, you can see their scores. So let me go to somebody that has turned it in. So here is, uh, the essay, I, I can read it here. I can add a grade here. You know, I, I put the grade there. I can add comments here by typing. I can do a video uh, or audio message here. So 
that that was better. There's dictation so that I can I can just maybe just freeform and just talk about you know where you went wrong or right in your assignment. And then all I have to do so I give that student a grade and just keep clicking to the right and and I I can just quickly go through uh, this assignment for the whole class and you know relatively quickly certainly faster than than just grading you know papers by hand it was definitely a time saver when i used it and then if you attach a rubric to that um, um assignment then you would have that rubric available there as well so it's it's a pretty pretty great tool the syllabus is is automatically updated or can be as you add new assignments. So if there's a mid-year change uh, that uh, like a, a new piece of curriculum that needs to be added, this will automatically be added. So it's not one more thing you have to do. Uh, this uh, completely uh, links to Google Drive and Google Classroom. So uh, as a teacher, one of the first things you'll do is is link it to your Google Drive, and then you'll see everything. So if you needed to an attach to attach a document, you just do it here. We've incorporated Zoom into um, Canvas completely, so I can see all of my current meetings. I can see the previous meetings, and if I want to schedule a a meeting for the class, I would just give it a title, say when, and the duration. If it's recurring, like if you have every Tuesday at at 11 a.m. class for this one course, this is where you would do it. And then you just click on save. Once you do that, all the students will get an email saying there's a, a Zoom meeting. It will be on their calendars and it will also be in their to-do list. I, I showed you earlier. And like... Uh, how Zoom is incorporated and STEM scopes, we're going to work to try and get all of the curriculum in, in there, like as much as we possibly can so that hopefully the students can just live in the four corners of Canvas. They don't, our hope is that they won't ever have to really leave this tool. Um, there are about shared over a hundred thousand uh, courses and modules. You can find that in commons here. You'll all have access to that. So you can you can search around for fourth grade science or something like that and it, you'll be able to find probably hundreds if not thousands of things just for that exact query. And you can you can just click on them, poke around and see if it's something you're interested in. We have uh, um, um, a template uh, this here that you can import. This template is the one that I'm using for my practice course that you're seeing here today. It has one of everything like discussions and quizzes and modules and all that kind of stuff. So you can cheat off of and just see how it works and play around. So this would hopefully grow as um, you know teachers used it so that there would be a bank of shared modules, course shell, you know, outlines for a course and all these things that we could pull from each other and use with each other, or we could create things as a district and put them here. You know, if we had a fifth grade, create a course and things like that, we could, we could add those things here too. And over the summer, I think we are going to create school uh, templates. So there would be a Smith River one that has a Smith River colors uh, and, you know, the all the curriculum, the curriculum, if it, there's something that only Smith River has adopted, we could have it just for that school so that not everybody would see that curriculum. So that's if, some if homework we, were, we have to do. Yeah, if we were to buy it and we have not purchased it yet, we had a trial um, that we're using, which you have access to. We're gonna give it access to it real quick if you haven't gotten in already. Um, but these are things, you know, Tom is really thinking forward about how to support teachers and schools um, if we do use this in a broader sense and maybe just for the online program that's being developed. So um, great, Tom, great, great work. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you show them the help and then we need to, we probably need to get back and, and wrap up. Got it, okay. So if you need help and we are not available, there are three ways or two ways you can do it. That, chat with the canvas and this phone number they're awesome 
And then the last thing is the training portal. There is an awesome training that if you have time, you should definitely do. It's the K-12 first day ready. I'll just show you what it looks like here in just a moment. It took about two hours, I think. I did it a little bit over a couple different days and it, it was awesome. Um, it basically shows everything I just showed you here today, but actually how to do it. And this is the course. All right, back to you, Ray. All right. So um, I'll show you something real here and then we'll wrap up and take questions, hopefully. I think you're seeing my screen now. One thing I wanted to show, because we did get a question in a previous training, is Read Write, our tool, um, our literacy tool works in Canvas as well and everything in Canvas. So here I am in that sandbox course, which I'll mention. And so if I wanted to do the double highlight and text to speech, um, I just click that play button. I click the purple puzzle piece up here at the top which is our read write icon that hopefully you have access to. And then I hit play. Did everybody hear that? I didn't click share sound. So hold on, I wanna do this right. I'm gonna share screen. I'm gonna go this one, share computer sound. Now let me try it. Oops. There we go. And then, um, Builder replies by unread. Unread. Show deleted. Re oh, it's moving on on my screen. So anyway, it double highlights and reads everything on the screen. And so, um, just like it works on anything we use. So read, write works in here as well. Okay. All right, moving on. Let's, uh, jump back. Uh, over here to the slides. So again, that sandbox course, I think what Tom is doing is taking whoever's attending these sessions and he is pushing out to you this red sandbox course. And so you will see that when you log into Canvas if you, if you choose to check it out. And that's just a place where you can play and poke around, you can't break anything, click everywhere, try anything and uh, just you know, have a place to play um, with the course. So check out that if you're interested. Three things to learn about Canvas. Here's my top three. One is watch the tutorial, uh, K-12 first day ready, which Tom pointed out. And again, when you log into Canvas, you just go down to help, training service portable portal, and then uh, K-12 first day ready is in there, okay? There's also a webinar here about student engagement. Um, a big part of teaching students who are not with you all day, every day in person is engaging them in an online format. And we know it was difficult during the last two months. Some kids were all over it, some kids we didn't hear from. And so uh, there's a lot of good information here about how to engage students when you have to do some form of online learning. And then I put a link here to how to use calendar as an instructor. Again, if, if somebody's interested in using Canvas, and just wanted to start simply with calendar, that is a power tool, a great place to start, and you can build out things after that. Uh, resources here. My friend Chris Giles up in Beaverton, Oregon, uh, the whole school district uses Canvas. That's 46,000 students. He said on any given day, there's over 25,000 online in Canvas using it at a time. And at Instacon, so in structure, owns Canvas, and they have Instacon every year. And that is a, you know, conference for Canvas users. He presented, I believe this was last year, um, Canvas and Google, a match made in the cloud. It works great with Google. Uh, great way to house all that stuff in one place so kids aren't going all over. Um, but you can still use Google Classroom. You can still use all your Google tools and you can just do it in Canvas. So I encourage you to watch that if you're interested in that. Also, there's um, some information here about how to view analytics for a student in a course. One of the benefits of a learning management system is that granularity that we get to see what students are doing. So not just if they submitted it or not, but I can see where they were online in Canvas, what they spent time on, how much time they spent on it, you know, all those little details about what they were doing online. And then there's a Canvas instructor guide, and that's kind of the big daddy of uh, guides. So, you know, that's if you want to really dive into Canvas and see all the different instructor guides for everything Tom was showing you. And then this is a bunch of resources um, that I'll just continue to add to. So I put a lot of examples here. So here is an example of Canvas and kindergarten stations. 
Uh, a lot of kinders use Canvas. Um, and I know, and I'll talk about Seesaw also in just a minute. But there's examples here. So feel free to click on any of these and see what those things look like. Um, so you can start getting some examples about how it works with, with younger kids. So this is about a teacher that just used Canvas just for her stations in face-to-face. -face. This was before school closure. Uh, and they use it for their stations. So there's lots of examples of how K, 1, 2 are using it. Um, we can see that easier with 3 and up, grades 3 and up, but examples for K, 2 are nice. There's also a HyperDocs template. A lot of our teachers use HyperDocs. There's already a template in Canvas. Um, accessible module homepage, social skills course template. So all these things are available in those commons like Tom mentioned, and you can just pull them over and use, edit them, change them however you want, but you have access to all that. And here's a math one systems of linear equations, uh, modules that you can import right from the commons. And then here's a link to commons. So if you wanted to go back into Canvas and look and search for anything you would want for your course, it's there. There's a couple versions of elementary courses here that you could get those templates, put them in, and you, you already have it all set up, and then you just customize it. And then there's a Canvas K-12 community where they share a lot of information. I'll probably add here that Facebook group because they have been super active and really good at answering questions quickly. So I'll add more resources there as well, but feel free to click on any of those. And then some questions that we've gotten that we've added to the presentation. Uh, does the system allow teachers to provide detailed feedback for writing assignments? Yes, uh, very detailed and students can provide detailed feedback to you. So it's a whole feedback loop. And there is plagiarism checking available. Yes, it integrates with Google Calendar, Drive, all your Google tools. It actually enhances what Google has and just enhances it, makes it even better. So it doesn't, doesn't take away, you're not losing. Um, we talked about course enrollment, how it meshes with ARIES already. Um, it does work with ARIES gradebook. If a student doesn't have internet access, Tom mentioned that, you just can enable offline access. So if your student is out on, um, on charter or in uh, the shores, or has unstable internet. A lot of our families don't have really great internet. They can still do their work. And then the next time they're back on campus or within Wi-Fi, they can reconnect, upload, download, whatever they need, and they're good to go for however long they're away. And then again, help. We have a really good support program with Canvas. They are really great to work with, which is another benefit. Um, some companies that we're currently using, very hard to reach and don't provide a lot of support, and that's frustrating. And Canvas is really awesome. You can talk to a live person anytime. Uh, you can also talk to me or Tom. Um, so there's a whole bunch of people there to support you. So if, if you are in a situation where you have a question, you can get it answered pretty quickly. There's a whole YouTube channel from Canvas. So there's a bunch of videos here. This is a link to that uh, YouTube channel. So feel free to look at that if you want to check out YouTube videos. That's my preferred way to learn a lot of the time. And then a couple slides about um, Seesaw and uh, Google Classroom. So this is what Seesaw looks like in Canvas. This is something new. They haven't had a Seesaw integration forever, uh, but you can actually, this is a student's view of Canvas. So they're in their Canvas account, right? But they're seeing Seesaw just like it looks in the Seesaw app. So you can still use Seesaw but use it within Canvas and then you have access to your curriculum and um, more robust discussions and all those other things as well. So I don't want people thinking it has to be an either or necessarily, um, but it can be used within Canvas. Google Classroom in Canvas, here it is again, a student is logged into their Canvas account. That's the Canvas toolbar on the left, but Google Classroom's available and all those Google tools are in there. So it looks similar to Classroom on its own inside Canvas. You can add a rubric. There's a button to add a rubric within Canvas to an assignment that you made in Google. Teachers can use plagiarism checkers like Google Originality Checker or others. And students can submit and resubmit assignments. And there's a couple links down there about teachers using Canvas and Google together and how that worked for them. So if you're interested in that, feel free to click those links. If you want to check out Canvas now, you all have accounts in there if you have students rostered to you in Aries. Um, if not, just contact Ryan or Tom and they can add you manually, but it syncs with Aries. So if you have students rostered, you have an account. You can just click um, there or go to dncoe.instructure.com and log in with your Google account, your school Google. And then I also wanted to show a little bit about the app because I did download the app on my phone and you might just want to check it on your phone. So if you just download this teacher app, it's got the yellow icon. You want to download the teacher one. There's a separate app for students and a separate app for parents. Then you can click on that QR login like Tom showed. 
and just show it to your uh, desk, desktop or laptop if you pull up your own personal QR code there like he showed you and it will log you in automatically or if you click find my school just type in DNCOE don't type in Best Maxwell it doesn't show up easily we tried it type in DNCOE and it just brings you right to picture three here you Google log in and then you're logged in so that's all I did I just put DNCOE I clicked on that go and then I just signed in with my school Gmail and I, I have canvas on my phone ready to go so thank you and um, I want to be here to take questions and again uh, this is just informational so you can see what a learning management system is and why we're even considering it um, and I encourage you to think about it you know in that in that way about how we're trying to support students in this very unknown next year of school um, and no one's saying everyone's going to use it right away or anything like that that's not realistic school's about out we only have a couple days in August but we want to start looking at it um, as a way to support learning in the district and the first step is just letting you guys have this information so thank you for attending and if you have any questions let us know yeah, and we'll hang out here for as long as there's questions. Um, you can either unmute yourself or put them in the chat. Um, thanks, Tom and, and Ray. You guys did a great job as usual. Um, any questions? Just, just remember, this is really the structure. I, I kind of, if you say the company's name in structure, this is like the instructional structure within which everything can happen. And, and I'll just add that given the relative unknowns and questions out there on what fall will look like. This works across the entire spectrum from fully traditionally in person all the way to fully online and, and everywhere in between. So I think that's my huge selling point for it is just we come back, we have to go home again, we come back or students choose to opt to some level of that spectrum. Um, this is such a great tool to provide that, that consistency um, across the board. Um, so the students in person are using it, the students at home are using it. Um, anyway. I do want to make a quick note. Um, <clears throat> when I was previously a student at uh, CR, when we did use uh, Canvas, I used the student side of things. I don't know if anybody else has. Um, it's literally what you see on the computer is the same on the iPad, same on the phone, same on everything. Um, there's no changes, there's no differences. It's it's quick, easy, boop, 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 that's it. Students are pretty much there whenever you say, hey, go here and go there, and it's, you're there. That's good feedback, thank you. Thank you, yes. 